Hello, welcome to the Game Maker Portal. I uh, hope you enjoyed the previous episode of the Unity 3D introductory tutorial, uh, where we discussed uh, in, well Unity 3D basics and more specifically the windows of the interface. And I uh, hope you went it through. And uh, thank you for being in this episode where we gonna discuss now Unity asset workflow. Well, the basic workflow of the Unity assets and the mainly primitive and placeholder objects. I hope you have your Unity 3D opened up for you and um, we can dive right into it. So you have an empty scene and on your top corner of the toolbar you're gonna see a game object. If you go back, go on 3D objects you see a list of primitive 3D objects. Let's start with the plan because it's one of the most useful uh, placeholder assets in Unity, which can represent well a ground floor for you, uh, where you can then walk with your character and start some interactions that way. So I don't like how it looks at the moment, it's all white and just too harsh in the eyes. And in the hierarchy, you see the directional light, and directional light is that gives this white uh, thing on the floor it's just over bright. So let's just tone it down a bit with an intensity multiplier or parameter just tone it down so it kind of becomes blue and if you're wondering why is it blue it's because of the skylight here a dome which then hits the floor and attracts the the color from the skies which is which is an HDRI lighting and that's why Unity is so powerful so you have your floor here on the ground and it's a a primitive object you can just drag and drop in scene in the Unity 3D without even using programs like Maya which is good for modeling, uh, 3ds Max the same kind of flavor and just um, um, just different software there's my users, there's 3ds Max users, there's Blender users and Blender is for free if you want to try it out um, if you want to become a 3D artist and do uh, 3D models like houses, buildings, cars, weapons uh, definitely check them out or go in the channel where you can see speed art of some of the models in 3ds Max uh, for these 3D models. But I think uh, one thing you should know about the primitives is that they're already uh, usable in a scene and they're good for placeholders um, before programmers put together scripts and animations. They usually use these objects for, well, a placeholding uh, pre or importing uh, the finalized assets in the scene. And let's go to the game object, 3D object, and use, for example, a cube. And you can't see anything as of right now. It's because it's the under the plane. And if you press a Q on your keyboard, you can just go down and see where it's located in time and space. And you can just drag it on top of the plane so you can see it a little clearer. And you can focus on it by pressing F. Okay, so here we are. We can position it. And you see, it doesn't really snap on the ground of the plane. And reason for that is because it's not snapped. And uh, you can't snap it by these widgets. You can snap it by um, pressing down V on your keyboard, pointing down to the vertex of the cube, and just snap it like this on the, on the ground floor. And then you make sure it's uh, not intersecting, but it's right on top of the plane, which is a really important uh, thing whenever you create games, is that you want to make sure that other objects are not intersecting each other, or at least you want to eliminate that. And again, these cubes, uh, primitive cubes, are already textured. You can drag and drop textures on it. It's all completely wrapped, and uh, you're going to see uh, the textures unwrapping and just displaying very nicely. And you can create walls out of these things. You can create uh, primitive boxes, primitive houses, which is good for, again, blocking out some of the levels without jumping into the 3D platforms and, you know, hustling that way. So let's just do a couple of the, uh, couple, couple of the instances for the subject and see how it looks when you just play around. And as a, uh, oh, sorry. And as a beginner, it's kind of fun uh, to do these kind of things. 
build uh, little walls, houses. You just let your creativity get loose and be creative and do things you love. Okay, um, we have a plane. We have a, a box. Let's check out what else we got. So again, we go on top corner of the screen on the game objects. We do 3D objects and then we do a capsule. Here again, it's not snap to the ground, although we can just push it a little bit down to the flooring and you can see it uh, fit here nicely. And this again is a, a capsule. It can be used as a character controller for uh, just again for placeholding, which uh, can be good for sorts of things uh, if you get creative and kind of want to figure out you what you know, in what kind of uh, scenarios you want to use it but mostly it's used as a character you can put a weapon here um, do a little box drag it here um, which represents a little bit of a, a weapon you can make it as a weapon or at least look it as a weapon um, you put it like this you then attach some cameras and uh, do a, a simple script on it and you can kind of start to run around with it and shoot around and just have a, some interaction going on in the, in the screen of Unity. Um, now we have something else here. We got a, uh, what else, a quad. And uh, a quad is just a, a simple plane. And it's not the same as this one because it uh, this, uh, this plane has multiple uh, polygons and it's very GPU extensive. It's much heavier than the plane. The plane is uh, useful for uh, graphical user interfaces. For example, a television. If you have a television screen, you can or a poster. Uh, you can definitely use this uh, for poster, for television, or for decals. You just drag, drag and drop your graphical user interface up there as a texture and a material. And you'll see uh, something uh, very awesome. So let's see what we else we got. We got 3D objects. We went through a cube, sphere, capsule, cylinder, plane, and quad. And then we have terrains. We can make trees and even 3D, a 3D text, which we can use right here. And as you can see, it's two dimensional. It uses the same planes as this one and it contains just a few polygons, which is not extensive on the GPU. It's uh, lightly optimized, which is great for video games. And you can just simply change the text to something like Unity 3D Game Engine, whatever you want, right? And you can change colors to red and point it in time and space. So, um, again, just know that. You have an option without going into other platforms like 3ds max maya blender or other 3d modeling softwares that you can utilize power of unity 3d and uh, create any primitive 3d objects you want out of this scene and just get loose of your creativity and kind of stack them and use them in your um, scenarios or situation situations you want um, for me it's good for blocking out the stages and prototyping stages where you can just hop into the Unity 3D, uh, pop around some boxes, create some walls, create some buildings, create some cylinder, cylinders that represent enemies or just a character and uh, posters or texts and just play with it that way. So it's a very primitive thing, uh, nothing complex, but uh, know that it's here and you can use it and you can alter it in a ways that suits you the best. So. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't seen the first episode, just click on the link here on YouTube in the Game Maker Portal channel, and you're gonna be you're gonna see a maybe a playlist of a uh, tutorials that are for free, and you can just go back, rewatch it of the layout if you haven't kind of went through and experienced the layout of the Unity 3D just yet. Uh, know that it's there, and uh, hope you find this useful. And give us a subscribe button below if you enjoy this so you have a notification in your uh, YouTube that uh, we have uploaded a new video. And I'm going to see you in the next episode, alright? Thanks so much. Cheers.